Hello and welcome to another complete OCR GCSE PE lesson. In this one we'll be covering absolutely everything you need to know on the first learning objective for topic 1.2 on the structure and function of the muscular system, which is to know the name and location of the major muscle groups in the human body and to be able to apply their use to examples from physical activity or sport. First we have the deltoids or shoulder muscles which are involved in all movements at the shoulder. Some good examples of their use include performing a handstand in gymnastics and creating abduction and flexion when preparing to set in volleyball. If you want a recap of the types of movement at ball and socket and hinge joints you can click the banner and go and watch that short video now. The pectorals are the chest muscles and they're involved in adduction, flexion and internal rotation at the shoulder. To keep it simple, pectorals are involved in pushing movements like the upward phase of a press up and drawing the arm across the body like when throwing a discus or performing a forehand drive in tennis. The biceps or biceps brachii create flexion at the elbow joint. So we're looking at any movement that involves bending the elbow, for example the upward phase of a bicep curl and drawing back the bow in archery. The opposite movement at the elbow is extension or straightening and that's created by the triceps or triceps brachii. So good examples of the action of the triceps include shooting in basketball, jabbing in boxing and throwing movements like releasing a javelin. The abdominals or rectus abdominis muscles create flexion in the spine and hip joints. So we're looking at examples like tucking when performing a somersault or performing a sit-up. The trapezius muscle is the triangular shaped muscle at the top of the back and this one connects to the back of the cranium or skull. When it contracts it pulls the head backwards or creates extension in the neck, for example when tilting the head back to take a catch in cricket or looking up at the ball when spiking in volleyball. It also creates rotation in the neck so a good example of that would be turning the head to breathe when swimming. The other muscle in the back that you need to know about is the latissimus dorsi and this one is primarily involved in extension and adduction at the shoulder joint, so pulling the arms towards the midline of the body and backwards. A couple of good examples of the action of the latissimus dorsi include rowing and pulling the arm through the water when performing the front crawl. Next we have the quadriceps which is a group of muscles on the front of the thigh. Now when the quadriceps contract they extend or straighten the leg at the knee joint. So the best examples involve jumping, so jumping to rebound in basketball or taking off in high jump. The muscles on the back of the thigh are the hamstrings and these create the opposite movement which is flexion or bending the knee joint. So we're looking at examples like preparing to shoot in football and raising the heel when running. Just above the hamstrings we have the gluteals. The main role of the gluteals is to create extension at the hip joint which is pulling the leg downwards and backwards. Some good examples of the action of the gluteals include jumping to receive a high pass in netball which clearly involves extension or a straightening at the hip joint and pushing off the board in long jump. Another good example is driving out of the starting blocks when sprinting. Moving down the leg we have the gastrocnemius or calf muscle which creates plantar flexion at the ankle joint and plantar flexion is the movement of the toes downwards away from the body. So think about examples like pointing the toes when diving or in gymnastics, pushing off when jumping so jumping to head the ball in football and again pushing out of the starting blocks in sprinting. Okay, so that was every muscle group that you need to know about for the OCR specification and some examples from physical activity of the movements they create. The kind of questions you get asked on this usually involve antagonistic pairs, which will be the focal point of my next video, but you may also get asked a question like this, which is to name the leg muscle that contracts during the extension phase of the exercise in figure 22, which as you now know is the quadriceps. So that was everything on the names and locations of the major muscle groups. If you like the slides I use in my videos, I will leave a link in the pinned comments and the description down below. Join me next time for the next learning objective in which we'll be looking at the roles of muscle in movement, so the terms agonist, antagonist and fixator.